I am on a mission to find the best laptop cooler. The current reigning champion is the IETS GT500. It does a fantastic job. However, this is the first of its kind, so let's test it out. The big difference lies right here. There are two fans that run at 2500 RPMs each. This little pad right here is their crazy cooling. This right here is a thermal electric cooler and it has its own fan cooling that down. That uses a peltier effect. There's some scientific explanation that I just don't know. This way we have some standard benchmarks. We will start with the laptop on the desk. You know it's gonna get hot, especially if you've been watching my previous videos trying to track down the best laptop cooler. Then we will elevate it and put it on the laptop stand. And finally, we will put it on this guy. Which can be elevated. As you can see, as soon as I started OBS, temps went up. And the temps are continuously going up as I'm starting this game. At idle, while recording, my CPU is at 90 degrees Celsius, 85 to 90. My GPU is at 78, and I'm already not liking those temperatures. My computer was accidentally on silent mode, so I put it back onto performance mode and see how the temperatures change. CPU and GPU temps are dropping massively. However, my hard drive temps are still pretty dang hot. For solid state drives, you don't want them to ever get above 158 degrees Fahrenheit or 70 degrees Celsius. And we are about 12 degrees Celsius off from that 70 degrees. But the CPU and GPU look to be leveling out now. Let's go ahead and enter a game and see what the temps look like. GPU temps, 68 degrees, CPU, 78 to 80 degrees, and solid state drives, 55 to 51 degrees. We are now on the laptop stand. So the temperatures have dropped, probably five to 10 degrees on the GPU and CPU. Hard drives are just about the same. Now, let's try the cooler. We're gonna lift it on the highest setting as possible so we have as fresh of air coming in as we can. These are the buttons to turn on the Peltier cooler and then turn on the fans, it has two different modes. We will be using a USB-C to power the device and USB, which you'll plug in to your laptop. I'm gonna press this button and turn on the Peltier cooler. Just the Peltier cooler is on right now. Okay. Let's let that sit for a minute and see where the temperatures go. Because the Peltier cooler will take a minute to get cold. Temperatures was steadily at 66 degrees. Now we are at 64, 65, that's on the GPU. And the CPU temps are still kind of hovering the same thing. Hmm, the solid state drives don't look any different at this moment. I am now going to turn off the Peltier cooler and see how hot it gets. Oh. My solid state drive got below 50 Celsius. One of them did. That is amazing. That means it was doing something because that drive would never get that cold <laughs> under gaming conditions without an external cooler. But now, the Peltier cooler is off. Let's see where the temperatures go. The CPU temps seem to be getting a little bit hotter. The GPU seems to be pretty stagnant. My solid state drives just got a little bit hotter. Turning the Peltier cooler back on. I'm noticing a bit more caveats with this cooler, which again, I'll talk about in a few minutes. The Peltier effect brought down the temperature about two degrees on the top hard drive. And the temperature is now a bit lower on the GPU. Also, another thing I forget to mention that this room is 80 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty hot. Let's turn the fans on, the highest setting. That'd be three clicks. Now let's see what the temperature does. That's pretty interesting so far. With the fan on full blast, these temperatures, I will say are arguably about the same, this GPU and CPU, but solid state drives. This one kind of stayed around the same temperature up and down, but this one went up in temperature. The temperature went up when I turned the fan on. If you see, I can see daylight. In order for that Peltier quarter to work, it needs to sit flush with the bottom of the laptop and it kind of sits flush right in the middle, about right there. However, it's not sitting flush right on the left side and the right side. On top of that, the airflow can come out this way from the laptop cooler. And the reason it's not sitting completely flush from my laptop in particular is that right there is hitting the laptop cooler. So I scooted the laptop a little bit to the left to make it quite a bit more flush. It's not as flush on this side. And because it wasn't sitting as flush, the airflow coming from the fans was seeping between the computer and that cooling pad, therefore making the cooling pad not as efficient. Temperatures are looking pretty decent. I'm now going to turn off the cooler's fan, okay? The fan is now off. So we know that air is seeping through the sides of this cooler because it's not completely flush on both sides. It's preventing that from happening. So let's use this foam and see if that changes the temperatures at all. Okay, okay. We have the foam preventing air seepage from all sides. I'm just unsure if the Peltier cooler is making contact with the bottom of this computer. Let's give it a few minutes and see what happens. All right, so that did not work. The temperature has already went down without this. 
My solid state drive temperature, one of them is at 49 degrees Celsius, which is a safe temperature. And the other ones are above the optimal temperature. Right now, the power is being drawn directly from my computer. I wanna see if drawing the power from a different source, like my docking station back here, will drop down the temperatures a little bit. Okay, I don't think that did anything with the temperatures. The thermoelectric pad is actually still a tiny bit cool, which is surprising. I think I would call this false advertisement. That's what I call it. In the ad, it says it can get 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which is freezing. Number one, when I let it cool down to its minimum temperature, it did not feel frozen. Number two, when I took it out of the box, I immediately knew that this was gonna be flawed because it was only USB power. For a pelter cooler to hit an optimal temperature, you need a lot of power and USB you simply cannot produce that much power. Let's say you did have the optimal power and you can plug into an outlet. The average temperature for a non-stacked pelletry cooler is about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Although this did have false claims, it did indeed lower my solid state drive temperature. Typically those temperatures would be skyrocketing and getting to critical temperatures. The temperature is getting pretty critical. I'm just going to turn on my IETS laptop cooler. You already see the GPU temps dropping down to 62. It was at 64. These are also tumbling down the order. There's a lot of room for improvement for this cooling pad, but my fans on that computer were blowing at maximum speed. And that's what I kind of want to reduce whenever I'm doing heavy gameplay. I don't want those fans blowing as hard as they are. So guess what that means? I'm still on the search for the best laptop cooling pad. If you want to see how that laptop cooler stacks up to the reigning champion, the ITS GT500, check out that video. This is Chris, always appreciate and respect another. I'll see you next time.